Okay, so today we have Gino by Dexys Midnight Runners, or just Dexys, but I like to say the whole thing. So we're going to get into this one today. It's been on my mind for a while now. A lot of songs just, you know, go in the back burner, and then I'm like, oh, right, I want to do uh, that video. Anyway, here we finally are. I think the only song I know, like many people, is Come On Eileen by Dexys, but I know they have other songs. So let's get into this one, talk about it after. Let's go. Gino by Dexy's Midnight Runner. So coming into this, when you search out the lyrics and stuff like that, I mean, one of the first things you see is a question, you know, who's Gino? And I found out that Gino was Gino Washington, who was a singer uh, that Kevin Rowland, of course, lead singer of the band here, was very inspired by. And I guess maybe other members of the band were inspired by him too, but especially Kevin, because I do know that Kevin co-wrote the song, uh, at least uh, with the lyrics and stuff. But anyway, um, and I just wanted to say that off the top, that I do know, I guess, Gino was a real person. And obviously, I mean, I, what comes to my head off the bat is just the love, I mean, he has for Gino. And as the lyrics go on, I'm just going right into it, I guess, but as the song goes on, you can tell that Gino's career, because I'll be honest, I've never heard of Gino Washington, Washington, but I guess he was kind of big in, uh, I believe he was born in the UK, uh, but he, he was kind of big there. <clears throat> he uh, kind of, his, his uh, career kind of declined, whatever. But obviously, Kevin... 
uh, his love did not decline for Gino. And that comes to mind. I mean, other bands are just, I, even if you are a uh, musician, and that's what I, I wanted to say. If I ever got to, you know, if I, you know, all these things you might have th thought about when you were a kid, you know, if I was ever famous, if I became a big musician or whatever, uh, that's one thing I would do. I would probably write a song about somebody that really inspired me and maybe somebody that has never been given their flowers. And I, I don't know. So it's just very nice. It's just, it's very um, endearing to, uh, to the person you're giving a tribute to. I mean, I mean, there's people I love, bands I love that are, that other people might not know about, or artists, whatever. And you just want to, you just want to go to bat for those artists that you really love that nobody else really knows about, or you know, or maybe they know one song and that's it, and that's all they know them for. And you just want to say, no, they have other stuff that's great. Anyway, that all this stuff comes to mind. Obviously, Kevin. Love this person. Love this person. Love Gino. Um, I love from the get go uh, the whole the Gino chants, you know. And I guess maybe that's reminiscent of what he would hear at a concert. Uh, the whole Gino thing. It almost sounds like you know a soccer game or a football game, wherever you're from. I guess. Uh, again, I do know that a lot of people from the UK watch me, so I'll say football for that. But yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's 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 lovely. I mean, my God, and obviously, even though again he the c career declined. Uh, Kevin was forever inspired by him. And I like how at one point, too, we'll get to the lyrics soon, but I like how at one point he said, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't, you know, influence me academically or whatever, you know, you didn't give me anything for that, but you just influenced me in music and, you know, and, and maybe in being a person or whatever. So I don't know. I just really thought that was very nice and it was just a, a nice tribute. And I have to say, Kevin's voice, again, I've only heard Come On Eileen and Come On Eileen. And I, I talked about bands, you know, that maybe people don't know about that much and, Dexys is one for me. Again, all I know is uh, "Come on, Eileen," and maybe they they must have you know big fans out there that say you know "Come on, Eileen" is just the start, you know that kind of a thing. But anyway, um, uh, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, his voice, Kevin's voice. Uh, I know he has a unique voice. He almost sounds like he he's gone hoarse, but he makes it sound good in a way. He has a unique voice. We'll say that much. And it's just like it's hard to understand every word he's saying, but it's just so unique and it's so distinctive. You know what is Kevin Rowland? Even again, if you haven't heard a lot of his songs, you know that it's like, oh, that's the guy from Dexy's Midnight Runners. I mean, my God. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, too, the band had a great style. Uh, I would say clothing wise, I, that's where I was going with that. And I, I've always loved uh, Kevin's little mustache that he's always had. Anyway, I, you know, just these things have come to mind, but his voice, uh, no one has sounded like Dex or like Dexy, like Kevin. He's so, again, he's an original. He's, he, and I was going to say that at one point during the song, but I thought I'll just wait. But yeah, his voice is so distinctive. Nobody sounds like Kevin Rowland. I mean, my God, uh, it's just so different, <laughs> but, but, but I like it. It's, it's, it's quirky in a way. And, uh, and I mean, they're energetic here. You can tell they're passionate. I love their passion in this too. And as uh, I saw in the comments here, you know, great brass section, as they say, saxophones, I mean, galore. Uh, I guess I'll look at the personnel because, uh, why not? Again, these guys are kind of new to me. If I could find the, uh, Wikipedia page that, uh, would help me out with that. So here we go. Kevin Rowland on vocals. And there's quite a few people here. Uh, Kevin Archer on guitar and vocals. And he was the one who co-wrote the song with, uh, Kevin, Kevin and Kevin, my goodness gracious. And I keep wanting to call Kevin Dexy, but that's not right. Obviously. Anyway, on guitar there, great guitar work. I thought as well. It's so bouncy. So uh, again, I don't know why the word tropical comes to mind, but it's just I, just the way, I guess, the brass instruments uh, would go kind of fast and then we'd slow it back down. It just felt like I was on an island somewhere just dancing along in my head. Pete Williams on bass. Pete Williams. I think that's a wrestler's name or something. Anyway, Pete Williams here is on bass. Andy, or he went by Stoker, Grocott on drums here. Andy Leak. My God, Kevin and Kevin, Andy and Andy. There's two Pete's. Is this on purpose? Were these the real names? Pete Saunders on organ. Jeff Blythe, Blith, I apologize, on saxophone. Steve Spooner, also on saxophone. And Big Jim Patterson on trombone. Again, the saxophones here and the trombone were just, I mean, they were in integral parts of the band here. But again, uh, there's two Pete's, two Andy's, two Kevin's. Goodness gracious. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that took me by surprise, I guess, that I just uh, had to get that out there. So, like I said, I mean, I, I feel like there's not much else to do. It's, it's, it's a punchy song. It's an enduring song. It's a lovely tribute. It's passionate. It's energetic. Um, again, the brass section of how it slows down, goes quicker, all that stuff. I really enjoyed the rhythm section here. It's, I don't know, it, it had everything I liked. I mean, my goodness gracious, a little bit of a, I don't know, if, and I don't know if this is the genre at all, but almost like a reggae feel. And maybe that's, maybe it's because that's, that comes to mind because I just listened to a reggae song. But just, I don't know, that kind of a vibe came to mind anyway. But either way, this was the 80s. 
And here we go with uh, the lyrics. Gino, 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 Gino. You had the uh, chance at the start there. And again, I feel like maybe that was a part of a uh, what he would hear at a concert, you know, coming out and people are waiting for him uh, with uh, anticipation. Uh, back in 68 in a sweaty club. Oh, Gino. Again, the way he says, oh, Gino, you could just tell Kevin has so much admiration for him. Before Jimmy's Machine and Rock City Rub, oh, Gino. Again, I feel like maybe he went to one of his concerts. And again, so many people, so many musicians have gone to another musician's concert, you know, somebody they were inspired by, and that's really where it clicks, and they're like, yeah, I want to do this as a living. But since, you know, how the song continues to go on, I'm going to guess that Kevin was at a concert in 68 in a sweaty club. I mean, you could just, a sweaty club, it's so detailed, you could just see it in your mind. Uh, before Jimmy's Machine and the Rocksteady Rub, I know Rocksteady's, you know, like a genre or whatever, but before these things happened, Jimmy's Machine, I did see an annotation here on Genius.com that that's a reference to uh, Jimmy Page, but I don't know if that's true or not. Jimmy's Machine. Either way, on a night when flowers didn't suit my shoes. So I guess he's got some... Uh, and like I said earlier, I like their unique style. And I guess his clothes didn't really match with, with his shoes. After a week of flunking and bunking school with the lowest head in the crowd that night, just practicing steps and keeping out of fights. Again, you can just sense the environment here. You're just trying to dance along and not get into fights or find trouble. Anyway, maybe trouble will find you. But, uh, and again, talking about <laughs> just going through school, uh, flunking and bunking school, flunking school. But that's not the point. It's like, you know, I hate school. I hate this. I hate that, whatever. But I love Gino. And I, it, this is what he's kind of been waiting for the whole time, it feels like. You know, he's wanted to go out and see Gino Washington, and finally the night has come after flunking and bunking school and all that stuff, and now you're just trying to dance along to the music without getting in a fight. And I love this line here, academic inspiration, you gave me none. As we already kind of found out, uh, Kevin was probably not a fan of school, and uh, Gino gave him no academic <laughs> inspiration, uh, but he gave him inspiration in other ways that uh, would help Kevin make a living. I mean, my God. But you were the Michael the Lover. You were Michael the Lover, and I guess that's a reference to one of uh, Gino's songs, I guess. The fighter that won, but now just look at me as I'm looking down at you. No, I'm not being flash. It's what I'm built to do. And I think about, you know... I I don't think this is condescending and on purpose because, again, Kevin seems to have a lot of respect for Gino. But at this point, it's like Kevin is bigger than Gino was. And again, we find out that Gino's career has declined. So I don't know if he's kind of saying he's looking down at Gino now before Gino was looking down at him. Um, or if you're just talking about on a stage, obviously, the, the people on the stage are higher than the people in the audience. So that comes to mind, too. Either way, Kevin and his band are on top now and Gino is kind of forgotten. Uh, that man uh, took the stage. His towel was swinging high. <laughs> oh, Gino, this man was my bombers. My Dexies, my high. Oh, Gino. And as well, as a, there's an annotation here on Genius, because I don't know everything about Gino, but apparently he would come out swinging a towel <laughs> on stage. Again, he, Gino sounds like a character. I was going to say sounded, but he's still alive, as I uh, found out here. Anyway, and then like the he, he was uh, Kevin's everything. He was his high. He was his Dexies. And of course, Dexies, I was thinking... Is he talking about his future band? But no, I would think uh, Dexys, of course, is also a uh, drug or medication, a, whatever word you want to use there. I think it helps you wake up or something like that. Uh, either way. Uh, so there you go. He was, you know, he, he didn't need anything else. He needed Gino. I mean, my God. And again, that says so much about uh, who Gino was and what he meant to Kevin. Good Lord. The crowd, they all hailed you and chanted your name. Again, to feel that admiration would be just uh, great, my God, uh, as a big star or whatever, and you just you feel like you're on top of the world. But they never knew, like we knew, me and you were the same. That's wordy as hell. But either way, I feel like, I wouldn't say he's obsessed with uh, Gino here, but obviously he feels like Kevin, know, he feels he knows Gino more than others. He feels a kinship, you might say. So um, again, he has a lot of admiration for this guy. And now you're all over. <laughs> That's just one way to put it, I guess. Your song is so tame. You fed me, you bred me i'll remember your name again gino's career declined and like i said i've never heard of gino but obviously he was a he was a star to kevin especially and um even though he he isn't known all over the world anymore or whatever i i just love that uh, kevin's never going to forget him and obviously he's never going to forget him because he helped inspire kevin to go on and have his own music career and, uh, and i just love how much uh respect he has for Gino. Anyway, academic inspiration, you gave me none. So this comes back in. And I just love that line one more time. And uh, and I don't want to repeat the whole thing again. So then we go on, oh, Gino, whoa, Gino. Oh, Gino, whoa, Gino. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's not, this is pretty straightforward. It's, it's a song, it's a tribute to one of his favorite singers, I guess you might say, somebody who really inspired him. 
really influenced them. I guess I'm phlegm in my throat or something. And uh, but, but yeah, and, and you know, and there's nothing really beyond that. It's all about Gino. It's all about what uh, Kevin took from Gino. And uh, at about I guess that time you saw a Gino, I would guess back in '68 in that sweaty club, and uh, you just feel like you're there, and then you feel like, oh my god, I love Gino too. My god. So anyway, I mean, I guess that's all I gotta really say. It, it was a great song. Like I said, powerful brass section. Um, great vocals too, you know, so unique again, distinctive as hell, uh, almost soulful vocals too. I mean, I gotta say soulful is a word that does come to mind for that. And, um, yeah, and, and punchy too. And like I said, up and down, it's very melodic and, uh, I really enjoyed it. So anyway, I guess that's all I gotta say. Finally came to Gino today and I enjoyed it and I loved the sentiments here and the message, uh, you know, never forget who inspired you. My goodness gracious, no matter how big you get. So thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. Really appreciate all the support and I'll talk to you guys again soon.